course, what we'll be talking about today is not individual advice. Obviously, everybody's circumstances are just very unique and, and very different. So we're gonna to try to build some framework today to help people make decisions, but again, not advice. Um, also, I do recommend that uh, if you can join, there's a virtual event put on by Southwest. So that's next event is uh, July 7th on a Tuesday at 11 o'clock central. So that should be in your company email on how to join on, on that. Kevin, did I miss anything? Well, I would just mention that uh, for those that don't know, Charlie is a first officer as well with Southwest Airlines and also a certified financial planner. And I myself am a certified financial planner and a CPA. So uh, the, the opinions that we give are our own uh, as financial planners and CPAs, and uh, we're excited to uh, talk about this. Yeah, thank you all for joining us. And uh, we're glad to have you. So we're looking forward to your questions too. We've got some smart people on the call today. So I know that you're gonna ask some questions that uh, they're gonna stump us, Kevin. So we're gonna, we'll give it our best shot. But uh, so first, and uh, some of you may be using iPads. If you are, it's a little tricky. There's like three little dots in the upper right hand corner area. And if you hit that uh, function, then you'll see a, a selection that says chat. And then that will allow you to write in a question and or or heckle us, Kevin, if they want to do that, they can do that. Well, as well. I do I do want to warn people, Charlie, that if you do hit chat and hit yeah. everyone, everyone will yeah. see yeah. your chat. So uh, right. it will not come to just us. Absolutely. So, so be careful. That's right. Um, this will be recorded. We're going to get this out. You know, it probably take us a week or so to get this back out onto our uh, download onto our website. So any of you uh, that know anyone that missed it, uh, not able to attend today. We're going to uh, record this and Lisa just remind me if I am recording, make sure I don't forget that. Um, it looks like we are. So just let yeah, me know. I've already got us set up to record. We're good. You said? Yep. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Um, Lisa, thank you very much, actually, by the way, for setting this up for us. Lisa's our business development. I uh, call her executive vice president, Kevin. She's up in Wisconsin and uh, she, she did all the, uh, the behind the scenes hard work for us. So we appreciate you, Lisa. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you. So the last couple things there, Kevin, let's just real quick set the, the tone here. Who is this for? And uh, the conversations that we have sometimes with our pilots are interesting in that it kind of goes like this. Hey, if I don't take the VSP or if I don't take the ETO, I can make more money, premium, et cetera. And I say, no kidding. Yeah. You know, this is not a webinar to uh, help you make the most money out of these programs. You're going to make the most money by staying and flying at Southwest. There's no way around that. Most likely. Yeah, most yeah, likely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we want to just, you know, maybe some of you are on the fence. Maybe some of you have already decided and you want to know, now what do we do? You know, so we're going to make sure that we don't miss anything. There's no gotchas. Um, and so that's kind of what our purpose is today. Yeah, and no, I think that's true. I mean, we're, you know, we're relatively excited yeah. about the VSP and uh, the, you know nothing's ever perfect but the fact that so many pilots that we talk to are, mm -hmm. are kind of amazed about the program and the five years and all that uh, that's what makes it uh, extremely interesting for all of us to, to look at this option of, of not working for five years and getting paid oh, yeah yeah so so we're excited as, uh, to, to talk to you all today the last one there <clears throat> there's going to be a lot of different scenarios a lot of different what-if questions um, and Kevin, let's talk about the elephant in the room right now. What if Southwest goes bankrupt? You know, that's the biggest one. And there's no real answer to that. You know, we're, we're going to talk about it more throughout and a couple different things, but the future is unknown. So we're going to do our best to just help people make the best decisions. And it's all about the trade-offs. Yeah, no, absolutely, Charlie. And I'll, I'll just mention, you know, the bankruptcy, um, I think uh, that that is the lowest common denominator of can you uh, go into the VSP and if Southwest, and we're not saying they will, but it's a very low probability event, Charlie, but if it does happen, um, I, think, I think everybody should be prepared for that. And if you can pass that stress test, then I think you can really pass any stress test. Yeah, I agree. We looked into it. Um, a little bit, we, you know, the VSP is a ERISA program, which brings along with a lot of legal Department mm -hmm. of Labor uh, rules and regulations. But it does not, you know, this program, the VSP in particular, is unfunded. So we we believe that that still makes it, um, you know, at risk as far as absolutely is concerned. So obviously not legal advice there. We're not attorneys, and that stuff. If you know anything about ERISA, there are ERISA attorneys. They build their whole careers on that particular law back in 
written back in 1974. All right, so real quick, uh, an agenda that we're going to go over with today. So uh, today we're going to talk about, uh, you know, the, what's the latest? What's the latest word on the street? Um, and, and what's the probability of people getting these programs? We're going to give a quick overview and, and maybe talk about some numbers, but we're not going to get into a ton of the nuts and bolts because most of us and most of you all know that by now. And if we do miss something that you think is important or want to know about, just ask the question. A lot of today, what we're going to focus on are these retirement case studies, mm -hmm. some uh, planning topics. And then, Kevin, I'm excited about the top 10 at the end there as well. So, yeah, yeah. And I think, uh, you know, that's one of the things we want to make, uh, uh, you know, make note of up front is that we're, we're not going to go through every uh, dirty detail of these plans. Y'all probably already know the details. Uh, we can go through some of them, but really what we want to talk about is how to make decisions on, under uncertainty, uh, how to make the decision yourself uh, with, with all the opportunities that are out there. So that's really the more important part, I think. Absolutely. Just make sure there's no gotchas as far as anything anybody miss really too. All right. So as far as the state of the industry, I pulled this off the web, CNBC. Uh, I think it was yesterday, Kevin. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's really incredible. In fact, it had a few other industries on there, such as hotel and the mortgage trends as far as, um, you know, where we're at this year compared to last year. And, and I don't know if you can exactly see on this graph. In fact, it says it right there. You know, we're still down 80% where we were last year this time, which is absolutely incredible. And I know a lot of, I haven't flown since April, Kevin, but a lot of the, the, the folks on our call, they've been flying and airplanes have been full, seats have been full. You know, mm -hmm. of course the center seats are, are um, open, but it's confusing. So, so we're kind of busy, we're, we're doing better than expected, but I think it's from such a low number mm -hmm. that we've got a long way to go. Yeah, and th this is not just Southwest, obviously, mm -hmm. it's all airlines. Uh, Southwest may be doing a little bit better, we, mm -hmm. we believe, yeah. but uh, this is all airlines. And the other thing I'll say, Charlie, is if one looks at this graph and kind of extrapolates out, it looks like uh, air travel is not going to return for another six or seven years. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but the part of the what ifs is, uh, especially if you're going to take the extended time off, part of the what ifs, if what if there is a vaccine or what if yeah. there are some therapeutics that come out that are extremely helpful? Um, there could be positive what ifs too, and yeah. maybe that number will come back up. Let's keep our fingers crossed and hope it will. Yeah. And part of the reason I wanted to put this on here is because as we see, you know, airplanes full, we see people flying again, we think a couple of things. Uh, we think, well, maybe they won't offer these programs. Maybe I won't get the programs. Right. So, uh, you know, just from reading and listening and talking to as many people as I can, uh, in my opinion, Kevin, I think anybody that wants the VSP is going to get it. This is my opinion from what I've heard and talked to and listened to, to people at Southwest say. That may not be true for the ETO. You know, the ETO, um, they're going to give out the five, the longest tenured first, but uh, not everybody might get that though, plus four. Or if everybody does, we, we all can agree on this call, I bet, that they're going to be called back uh, maybe sooner than they plan, which can be a good thing. Again, so we're, we're just hoping the best for the company. But those are some things that, uh, again, just some opinions of ours anyway, of where we're at. So there's still, like I said, the point of that slide, Kevin, is there's, there's still a need for uh, people to take the VSP and, and Southwest is hoping that people do. So I think that's the, the biggest point there to uh, take away. So just an overall, again, these are just some of the nuts and bolts we talked about. Here's the numbers. You all know these all by now, just, just as well as we do. I think today, Kevin, the majority of what we talk about is probably going to be slanted toward the VSP, mm -hmm. mainly because if you're ETO, then you're an employee. So it kind of, you know, in some ways, it's kind of simpler. You know, right. uh, yeah. once you get the numbers, it's like you're an employee. Everything else still applies, which is kind of nice. Um, but there's, uh, there's some nuances we'll talk about there. Uh, but otherwise, we're going to talk a lot about the VSP today. Yeah, and I, I mean, I think uh, just talking to people and talking to you, Charlie, I mean, you know, trying to figure out who should take the ETO. Mm -hmm. We can't really figure out who should take yeah. the ETO, except maybe someone uh, who was jealous that when other friends got out of college and they yeah. went on a sabbatical or they took a trip yeah. or uh, they went uh, and found themselves for a few yeah. years. I mean, that's about, I think, all. Yeah. the people we can think about who may want to take the extended time off. Uh, 
or if you just don't feel like working for a couple yeah. of years, I guess. Take whatever. a break or a little yeah. or something. Yeah. But you know, we, we've, we've joked with some people, we have had clients write books. Hey, it's a good time to go write a book. That's true. Uh, so, but otherwise, you know, it's a, a little break. And, and again, before we move on though, Kevin, I do want to hit on just a couple of highlights on the ETO. Um, you know, it's six months to five years and they're going to recall people in reverse order. But first, they're going to seek volunteers. Mm -hmm. So if you're a, a five-year person and you change your mind and say, I want to come back after six months or a year, you can do that. Mm -hmm. And they're going to do that based on seniority. So that's something to put in your bag of tricks as far as if you want to bid the ETO, maybe you bid the longer one knowing that you can volunteer to come back for the shorter one. No, I say knowing that nothing's knowable for sure, but they're going to, they're going to offer that in order of seniority. Let volunteers come back in order of seniority. Um, so that's, I think that's important on the ETO to, to understand. So if I want more time off, Charlie, I should bid for a longer time period with the extended time off. Is that correct? I, I agree. If that's, I want more time off, yeah, I should yeah. say I want more time Absolutely. Off. And then again, you'll have the option to, to come back as they start bringing people back. They're going to look for volunteers first in seniority order. All right. So, um, you know, the last thing I'll talk about ETO there again, kind of getting in this all up front is what if I'm out on ETO and I lose my FAA medical? Mm -hmm. Basically, nothing's going to happen, Kevin. The, you know, the company paid loss of license will not apply. Sick time will not apply. You're on ETO. So now if you come back off of ETO and you still can't get a medical, then the normal sequence of events for, uh, you know, uh, loss of license, sick time, all that stuff. Will Disability. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so that's kind of uh, one of the things there on one of the calls, the other, somebody asked a great question. Well, what about short-term disability, long-term disability? Um, and basically we don't know. Um, and the person on the call didn't know either because there's too many variables to know if, if it's a dis, if you're uh, under a disability or if you've just lost your medical, there's just too many variables to know what met life is going to qualify you as. So it's a little bit complicated um, for that, for this context, especially. Anything to add on that, Kevin? No. All right, hopefully good. we've got this, the big ones again, the ETO big ones out of there. Um, so let's talk about the numbers. Um, you know, the thing that I think on this slide that sticks out to me, this is again, the, as you can see in this slide there, I just picked Georgia state tax, some of the states and some of the people on this call don't have any state tax. so subtract out 800 to a thousand dollars and that's what you're going to get but i think the thing that kevin that sticks out to me is that federal income tax withholding uh that's a big one and that kind of i didn't realize that until the last minute let's just say yeah yeah we, we, we found this out today uh just to, just to be blunt we, we saw we that found number out today that it was yeah. going to be a 22 percent withholding now just so everybody knows, it's, it's not a big deal. If you already know this, that's great. But if they withhold 22% during the year and then you go to settle up with your taxes at tax time, you'll get back a lot of money. So, uh, you know, you can go on a, I don't know, I would say go on a trip, but maybe that's not mm -hmm. appropriate right now. Yeah. But you can get back a huge refund. So yeah. the fact that they're withholding more money up front, uh, they're just doing it because it's severance pay. And that's yeah. the reason for that. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Kevin, for that. It, and it gave me a minor heart attack when I saw that because it's quite a bit more than I anticipated. But it is something you'll have to adjust to on your monthly you know, budget. So that, that's important. So those are the numbers there. They are withholding everything on this screen that you see. Um, Southwest is paying their share of the Social Security Medicare. That's right. And so, again, this is, this is if you want to run these numbers yourself for your state, that's paychecksity.com. And it's a really nice calculator to get that information if you haven't done that already. The first paychecks are going to be October 20th for planning purposes. So don't be surprised when there's no paycheck October 5th. Uh, and because I've been on the ETL last couple of months and I've been surprised a couple of times uh, to say the least. So, but uh, here's, a, here's an FO version, go ahead. Yeah, so that was the captain and now here's the yeah. FO. Yeah, absolutely. So same withholding there, same state. Uh, just wanted to throw those numbers out there and um, again, no more deductions. If you're on the VSP, no more deductions for short-term disability, long-term disability, union dues, all gone. So that stuff um, obviously does not apply. Uh, essentially, again, if you're on the VSP, you're not an employee. If you're on the ETO, you are still an employee. And we didn't, add, we didn't put the pay stubs for ETO on here because I told Kevin, I said, I don't know, there's so many deductions and they vary so much 
per pilot that it's just, it's kind of a guess. So a, a pilot's pay stub is yeah. always a maze it is. Uh, it's just a, with the amount of uh, you need a PhD. deductions that are out there. So yeah. yeah, it makes it very difficult if you're still an employee. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, you know, the, the, the thing that we hope is useful today is we're going to just look at two scenarios and um, hopefully we can get some framework on how to make this decision. You know, what kind of implications does it have, Kevin, if I retire, if I want to go out at 57, mm -hmm. you know, what's that going to cost me? Like we said at the beginning, yes, we're all leaving money on the table if we do this. That's a, that's a foregone conclusion, but maybe it's worth it. That's right. And maybe it's not. So let's look at a couple of things. Excuse um, me just a minute, Charlie. Oh, go ahead. I think we're having a little trouble displaying the slides. Can you double check your share settings? Okay, so you're not seeing my slides? We have a couple of people that aren't able to see them. So I just want to be sure that they're... Um, okay, let me, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll pause the share and then reshare. All right. And, um, and sometimes it's on an that, iPad where you... Uh, yeah. No, I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. And, uh, I, I told Charlie before the webinar, I said, uh, you know, sometimes with the iPads, it's hard to figure out how to see stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you just have to mess with, um, where is it on the iPad, Charlie? Is it in the upper section? And uh, you have to mess around with the screen sharing. Yeah. Uh, not the screen sharing, the screen viewing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Items. Yeah. It's a, uh, if you have more issues, let me know. I kind of did a little reset there, but let me know it's, most likely on the user's end and um, unfortunately sometimes it's a little hard but Kevin will take a look at that yeah I'm gonna, on I'm gonna the pull iPad. zoom up and I'll do a little behind the scenes research here too and, and all right thanks out. Lisa all right. Thanks, um, Charlie. sorry for the so, oh that's all right yeah thanks for letting us know as far as the assumptions we'll just let you know you know we ran these programs through our software so Kevin help me remember all the the important you know uh, assumptions you know we assume the next five years if you're on the VSP, or in this case, even there's an ETO scenario that you're, you're going to earn about six and a half percent rate of return. We yeah. don't know that's going to happen. It could be zero. <laughs> so uh, it could be 20. Uh, then we assume that once you hit retirement, you're going to earn about five and a half, 5.8, I think to be exact. So uh, we also assume inflation is about two and three quarters to 3%. Yep, that's right. These calculations uh, include Social Security, income, they include, um, and, and I don't think, I think the next scenario, uh, we don't have any uh, Air Force or, or Navy or military pensions. So they're just basically Social Security income and income from investments. Yeah, so, so this is a captain that's 57 years of age, as you see on the slide, thinking about taking the VSP, uh, 401k, 2.1 million dollars, mm -hmm. uh, the profit sharing 600,000. So we're, we're coming into age 57 with uh, $2.7 million. And, and one of the things we'll, we'll discuss more is probably the, the most important, uh, you know, these assumptions with returns and stuff like that, all very important, but probably the amount of spending that people are going to be doing in the next five years mm -hmm. and the rest of their lives are some of the most important assumptions yeah. that we can put into the software. Absolutely, term. yeah, garbage in, garbage out. And so, um, but these are, you know, real scenarios that we've run before just to show somebody the impact. Now, let me set this up because this is, there's a lot of information on the screen. We see this stuff every single day. So it's, it's, um, you know, it's kind of an old hat to us, but I know that a lot of you are seeing this for the first time possibly. Um, the first scenario we have is just as if the pilot age 57 with the above portfolio continued saving. And I, we probably just assumed 63,500 to be honest yeah, as yeah, far yeah. as uh, that's the limit in the 401k just to be conservative uh, this scenario is if that 57 year old pilot said I'm going to go to ETO and I went for five years again I continue just to save in the NEC and that's about it again 15 percent is what we assumed mm -hmm. of the 55 trips a month and then I went back to work you know again in, in this scenario they go back to work after their five after years after five years yeah yeah, yeah. This one, I take the VSP and just like it says, I maximize my Roth and that is a married couple maximizing a Roth over age, you know, at age 57. So that's 14,000 a year. That's right. 7,000 per person to maximize mm -hmm. the Roth, 14,000 for the couple. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yeah. Charlie. And you may be saying, how oh, well we can't do the Roth, we make too much, but, um, but sometimes we're able to do Roth conversions or backdoor Roth or whatever. Yeah. So we just use the Roth. 
And then the last one is the VSP with no savings. Um, again, 57 years old. I don't save anything else until, well, I don't ever save anything else. You know, then I go That's 62 right. yeah. and then I retire. So those are the assumptions. The, the last thing I will uh, disclaim, if you will, is this column, um, there are two columns in each scenario. This bad timing one assumes that you retire after five years and this person at 62 and then a and then 2008 type stock market hits yeah and that and that's so, the really hard part about financial yeah. planning is yeah. we don't know when the bad returns are going to come and if they come right when you hit uh, if you're 57 here charlie mm -hmm. and you hit age 63 and then all of a sudden yeah. you have two horrible years yeah. uh, that's what bad timing is and yeah. we're really not looking at that in this scenario yeah yeah so, so just keep in mind, I mean, these numbers may be low, but we're, we're really stress testing the heck out of this plan. That's why you see every result in right is smack in the middle of the green. So, oh, so the, this is bad timing. I'm sorry. These are all, yeah, oh, including okay. everything. So we're being fairly conservative is the point. And the numbers aren't hugely critical, but the differences in these numbers are really what we want to talk to you, Kevin. And, and the last uh, thing is that the number you're looking at here and in the other four columns, or the three columns, is after taxes and Medicare. So health insurance is paid for, taxes is paid for. Correct. You know, so you got to think about: Do I have a house payment? Am I going to have my house paid off? That's coming out of these expenses. Property taxes will come out. Homeowners insurance will come out. Obviously. Yeah, and, and Charlie, one one last thing: yeah. the four hundred one k and the profit sharing above all have to get taxed before they come yeah. to you yeah. in this scenario. Mm -hmm. So, so if you have a bunch of money that's after tax. Uh, you might have more money if you had 2.7 million. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's just talk about what's really important. Again, this is the difficult part about not being able to, uh, and, and we can run these numbers for people, but uh, this is just an example. What we really want to show Kevin, and I'll, I'll cut right to it, is that yeah. it's amazing the current scenario versus age 57 with no more savings. So essentially in this far right column, you stop saving at 57, you never save again. Right. You know, that may or may not be true for people. And then at age 62, you retire what is essentially three years earlier than you probably planned, which is all great. I mean, that's awesome. Love it. The question is for you, the pilot or participant, if you're anywhere near this situation, is am I willing to give up? Kevin, help me with the math. $2,500 difference in, yeah. in monthly income. So, yeah. And, and I will say that, mm -hmm. you know, the reason why the numbers might be lower than what you have seen if you've run numbers mm -hmm. is because uh, the, the probability score uses Monte Carlo. And so it's taking all the possible futures that you could have. And we're trying to say that 80% of the time, we're not saying that 20% of the time you're going to have to live under a bridge. What we're saying is 80% of the time, you're not going to have to change your spending at all yeah. in retirement. Mm -hmm. So it's possible that you could spend more money than that 6875 yeah. Again, we're using bad timing, mm -hmm. and we're also saying, well, I want to make sure that I don't have to change my spending. Yeah. So, so it's possible, Charlie, you could spend $9,000 mm -hmm. uh, a month and not run out of money. Yeah. But, uh, you know, financial planners, uh, yeah. you know, we don't like when people come with their canes <laughs> and battle us when we have our canes when, yeah. we're, when we're a lot older and if they run out of money. Yeah. So we like to be a little bit conservative. But as you mentioned, the key mm -hmm. here is the difference mm -hmm. in the amount of money uh, by, by taking the VSP and not saving any more versus uh, continuing to work. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, 57 um, is, uh, you know, I think the program probably designed for people around 60 plus amounts a couple of years and, and they're right on the cusp. Again, this, this example, they might go, yeehaw, $7,000 ish a month. And I can be done eight years prior to when I planned it. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. And here in Tennessee, so, that's good cash money. Yeah. That's good cash <laughs> money. That's technical speak. <laughs> that's what they say. Um, so the, the last thing I'll point out on this one is the ETO for five years. Um, it's, uh, not a whole lot. I mean, that's 500 bucks a month. I think if my math is anywhere near correct. Uh, how come, how come that's not much different yeah, than, yeah. Uh, than, than continuing to work, Charlie? Yeah. So, you know, you're going to get the NEC mm -hmm. and you're going to go back to work at 62 for three more years, saving 63,000, right. 64,000. Right. So, but can you imagine going back to work at 62, 63? <laughs> if, if, if you like flying that'd be uh, hard. if you don't mind hotels yeah. and airports yeah that, uh, would, yeah that would be challenging 
Uh, anyway, so let's move on to the next one. And again, uh, we hope these are useful as far as just getting any, some. Any, any comments, Lisa, uh, about uh, this scenario? Any uh, positive or negative feedback? Yeah, yeah. No, we have a quiet bunch today. No questions right. at this point. But if anybody does have questions, go ahead and submit them through the chat box. Or you also have a feature where you can click to raise your hand. Right. And then I can reach out to you directly and we'll get your, we'll yeah. see if we can do get your question answered. Yeah. Impressive. Very cool. Um, all right, this second scenario, a little bit older, age 60, in, in kind of the same, same-ish portfolio, um, even though they're a little bit older. So again, just different scenarios. And, and the point here, not to, not to compare this, these different cases, but the case within itself and the differences of the numbers here in the scenario. Again, age 60, current scenario, this person just happens to be after healthcare and taxes, they're going to count on confidently count on $9,500 a month. Does for Charlie, does that yeah. take into account Social Security as well? Yes, yes, Social Security is included in this number. That, that $9,500 a month is not the, uh, is, uh, um, uh, let's see, that's not just coming from the investments. Did I say that right? Yeah, yeah, and Social <laughs> Security, I believe, Charlie, is taking it at full retirement age. Yes. That's age 67 for, for yeah, most, for most, for people, most yeah. people. Some people are 66 in mm -hmm. a few months. Yeah, so, so from you know, the first scenario of age 62 to 67, it was just investments, and then Social Security would kick in. And right. this one, it's, uh, they're gonna be retiring at 65 after the VSP, and then uh, Social Security at 67. All right, so uh, Kevin, faster, funnier, as we say, we're not at the halfway point yet, but uh, the 9,500 here and then 8,250 here, you can see how much less of a difference that is wow, for incredible. this person. So yeah, and, and so, and then look at the, uh, you know, savings in Roth versus not saving at all. Again, there's a, you know, a couple percentage points difference here. So we're not, you know, we're not being super exact, but the point is, is that that at age 60, you know, and you're, you're not touching your investments until 65 is a lot different than pulling investments out at 62. Yeah, know. yeah. And, I, and one thing I'd like to just bring up is that, you know, doing a lot of financial plans, a lot of people will come to us and say, I want to quit at 55. Mm -hmm. And then we go ahead and run the numbers at 55. And then the person leaves, they're all dejected, they're upset. And they, they say, why is it so hard to retire at 55? Mm -hmm. Well, not only are you not saving as many years, but you're also starting to spend your money a whole lot earlier. Mm -hmm. And then we think you're going to live longer because you're living from 55 until when you pass away. So, mm -hmm. so that's the reason why I think this person that ages 60 who takes the VSP, it looks, it looks a lot better than the person who was 57. It's only three years though, Charlie. I know, I know. It's yeah. amazing. So I want to, you know, again, this is all about just helping people frame their decision and, um, and the impacts of the, the time and the savings. Because, but I still, all, I want all of you to take it still. So don't get discouraged, just take it. <laughs> so I can be more senior. No, I'm just yeah, kidding. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, let's see, Kevin. So I think this is where um, you've, you've kind of added in just some perspective on what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, so anyone that's uh, seen uh, when they were younger, seen a chart, or maybe you've tried to use this on your children to show them that the earlier you save, the more money you're gonna have by the time you retire. And what we're trying to show here is that the work you've already done is, is gonna be a lot of the work that needed to be done for your retirement. So uh, what I'm gonna show here is that the pile of money that you have today, as of five years before the VSP is over, is really gonna determine if you can take the VSP. And so initial deposit here, $2 million. And, and we're looking at a five-year time period, Charlie. Start date to end date is five years. It's actually five years in one day. And then we're putting in $60,000 a year or $5,000 a time period, so, which is every month. Mm -hmm. So what I want to show here is a person who's going to continue to work for the next five years, okay? 7%, I use 7%, I mm -hmm. went a little crazy, maybe more than six, but I think 7% is still reasonable. And so there's gonna be 60 deposits of that $5,000 over that time period. Total amount of deposits is 305. Ask you to remember that number, 305. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's go to the next uh, slide here. So of that 305, Charlie, it only grows to 363. Mm -hmm. 
the the two million dollars actually goes up by eight hundred and five thousand. So wow. so over the next five years, the work that you would have and I'm going to speak out of both sides of my mouth here. Wow. I apologize, but I have to do it. So the the work that you've done prior, that two million goes up to two million eight hundred and five thousand dollars. That's where the bulk of the growth is going to be for retirement. The money that you save for the next five years is only a smaller amount. Mm -hmm. So if you've done all the work, you probably can take the VSP. Mm -hmm. now, now, here's where I talk out of the other side of my mouth. Mm -hmm. If you've not done all the work, well, then you probably are going to have yeah. to really super save yeah. uh, the next number of years. And we do have clients, Charlie, we've worked with. Mm -hmm. They've come to us at age 55, 57 and say, and said, I've not done all the work, or mm -hmm. maybe I, were, I was furloughed, or maybe mm -hmm. uh, I, I was in the military. Kids in college. I, yeah, kids in college. I mean, so uh, we're not saying it's a sin. We're, we're yeah. just saying that a lot, of, when we're running these scenarios, uh, the scenarios that are really coming out positive are people that have really super saved mm -hmm. in the past. Yeah, and if you're younger, especially. But I think this, Kevin, this number mm -hmm. is uh, where the difference comes from. We just highlighted the difference in those scenarios. Right. But there's the difference right there. If you if you annuitize that number, then you know, depending on how old you are, it could be fifteen hundred bucks a month or, or so, you know, after taxes or whatever. So And we hope that your money will continue to grow mm -hmm. at the beginning of your retirement. Yeah. Too. Uh, mm -hmm. that's right. So uh, you know, we're gonna transition a little bit here to get to some of, you know, I think what's really important. You know, and again, Kevin and I, our attempt is to uh, overlay these decisions with financial planning, retirement planning versus just the nuts and bolts of the program. So how do you know how much income you can generate? And maybe we're going to even kind of show you an example of how you can execute that. Uh, so those are the two big ones, uh, obviously two big questions, Kevin. Yeah, so, two big uh, <laughs> questions. Yeah, I can't argue with that. So how much income can I generate without running out of money? You asked me yesterday in preparation for this, and, and how would someone on this call do this? And um, I don't know. I said, I don't know, because we use our software. We do it all the time. And, and so I, I kind of went out and did some homework, and there's calculators. You all have seen them before. You know, um, one of them that popped up I thought was good was Vanguard's. Uh, they're, they're all over the place. You know, 4% rule, dynamic RMD approach. There's dozens. There are people write books on this kind of stuff on how to get retirement income and how much you can get. Um, I'll talk about the 4% rule real quick. And I'll just start by saying it used to be the 5% rule prior to the 1990s. And now after research, or I should say in the early 90s, some research showed that maybe 4%. Well, guess what? Now people are saying, well, maybe it's not 4% anymore. <laughs> but the point of all that is it's a rule of thumb. You've got to do your homework on these to know how much you can take out and not run out of money. And, and if I can just... Uh... Uh, discuss what the four percent rule actually is is what the four percent rule is is the worst uh investment 30-year time period was 19 some say it's 66 some say it's 72 but mm -hmm. in that time period if you retired and you tried to live on your money for 30 years mm -hmm. if you took out more than four point i think it was 4.35 percent uh you ran out of money if you took 4.35 percent out or less you did not run out of money over those 30 years. You never ran out of money. Yeah. And so the thought is, is that if you spend, if you have a million dollars and you spend $40,000 a year, Charlie, and you increase it for inflation every year, you, sh you should not run out yeah. of money if you have a 50-50 stock bond portfolio. And, th and that's all the 4% rule mm -hmm. is. And it is, it is a rule of thumb. Yeah, rules of thumb. So again, you're going to have to do some homework on, on this one. There's a couple techniques there. The dynamic is just recalculating every year. Uh, to see, well, how's the market done? How did we spend last year? What happened? Right. So, right. Um, do we need do we need a new car? No, that's right. <laughs> we got to have a new car. We got to paint the house. <laughs> yeah. uh, a couple, three bullets, and I'm going to kind of hurry a little bit here, Kevin, because we're sure. running a tad bit behind. I want to get to questions and make sure we talk about healthcare very shortly. But you know, a lot of uh, strategies involve annuities. Mm -hmm. uh, Social Security is the best annuity you have. A lot of people on the call are retired military. That's an awesome annuity. Absolutely. So you've got those two. You don't need another one, probably. You know, if you don't have either one of those, or most people are going to have Social Security, of course, but mm -hmm. a low-cost annuities could, could help you create a floor for spending. Uh, dividends, people like dividends uh, versus, uh, you know, to create income. However, we caution them against uh, losing proper diversification by overly focusing on dividends. 
right now, uh, between dividends and bonds, it's really hard yeah. to not sell something to live off of. Mm -hmm. I, you know, yeah. bonds are paying one to 2%, mm -hmm. dividends are about 2%. So it's very hard not to have mm -hmm. capital gains. Yeah. All right, sequence of return risk is something we'll talk to in a minute and we've got a solution for that. Uh, but, uh, but before we went, we wanted to quickly do a touch and go on the social security uh, profiles and just kind of show you how this really works. And again, if we all knew when we were going to pass away, Kevin, it would be an easy calculation, easy decision. Very easy. Um, I think I can confidently say, correct me if I'm wrong, do not take social security at age 62. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and so. you know, the, the reason why there, there's economic decisions yeah. and then there's human decisions. The economic decision says never take social security at age 62. Never. The problem is, is that the human being, the human mind says, mm -hmm. well, what if the U.S. government does this, that, mm -hmm. or the other? I want to get my money while we're yeah. getting as good, Charlie. Yeah. Or if your health is failing. Maybe. Or, yeah. Yeah. And, so, and, and look at it as a couple. Uh, yeah. Because because the second person that's alive after the first person mm -hmm. dies will get the higher of uh, the two uh, mm -hmm. individual social security. Yeah. So you want to look at that as a couple. Absolutely. And we, we've talked about this a lot. We'll talk about it as we, uh, as we have three hours to kill in the cockpit and, and the pilot, usually the guy says to me, well, I don't care. I want to take it at 66, you know, and I, and I say, well, I don't care about you. I care about your spouse, your younger female, usually spouse, because the females have a longer life expectancy. Sometimes they're a couple of years younger. So we've got a plan for this combination, you know, uh, again, typically a couple there. So you can see the numbers are drastic, though. Here's age 70. Uh, this is just a scenario, a lot of moving parts, and it depends on your scenario. But look at the difference uh, between the two extreme scenarios. That's a lot of money. Uh, and I hate to see somebody make a mistake if, if it doesn't fit their, their lifestyle. So it's yeah. worth, worth thinking about. Charlie, if I can just, uh, you know, just say it's on the screen there, but look, $1.2 million over uh, a lifetime. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's some serious cash yeah. there. Yeah. It, can be, it can be a lot of money. The decision is important. Yeah. And if, if you take anything away from uh, this on Social Security, it's that if you at least wait till full retirement age, I think you're making a pretty doggone yeah. good decision. Yeah. And then just stay alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about sequence of return risk, Kevin, and that's a big deal. You know, and, yeah. and we're kind of talking to you all right now, uh, some of you, anyway, like you, like you might retire. Uh, and so, because you might. And so... So one of the things that uh, you're going to think about or read about if you haven't already is sequence of, what if, you know, like the, the previous scenarios, Kevin, where we showed that bad timing thing. What if I retire or this VSP or whatever and, and bam, the stock market just kills us, 2008 style. That's yeah. an unlucky scenario that happened to our pilots and when in 2008, they had to retire at age 60. That's the, you know, was the age and they were in 2008. So that is the perfect example of sequence of return risk. This is one way to mitigate that risk, the bucket, three bucket strategy we're gonna talk about. Yeah, so, so the, the goal in during your working years is just to create the biggest pile of money you can. The goal in retirement years is to spend down that pile. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you do so? And so, so one of the income strategies, the one that Charlie and I like the best, I think, not, not for everybody, but mm -hmm. it's the uh, three bucket approach. Uh, what you want to do is every day when you wake up, you want to have enough cash for one to two years. Mm -hmm. I'm more of a chicken than Charlie. Mm -hmm. I prefer two years of cash. So every day you wake up, you look at your, your checking account and you say, I feel good. I got cash. Yeah. But then the second bucket is going to be for maybe three to seven to nine years. Mm -hmm. And so three to nine years, I want to be able to wake up every day and know, Charlie, yeah. that if the stock market goes down 60%, uh, I'm going to be fine for the next 10 years. And then the third bucket is, well, this is going to be to stay ahead of inflation and this is going to be for the future. So, so that's the way I look at the three bucket yeah. approach. What, what about you? Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts here on this slide and we don't have time to go into all of them. But as you can see in the upper left corner, you got to think about taxes. You got to think about how do I rebalance in between here? You got to think about my overall asset allocation. Now, you know, the reason we like this and, and you can absolutely do the one bucket approach. Yeah. You know, one bucket. However, envision yourself on in retirement, March, you mean March 15th of this, of this year, maybe? Year, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one bucket was in the hurt locker. And we saw this with, with some folks. 
And um, that's very stressful as you enter, you know, retirement. And the, and the folks that, that had income secured for the year uh, to, to five years in these two areas, uh, they, they were not stressed at all. No, they were still stressed, Charlie. But, yeah, that's but they knew. Yeah, they knew that they had the cash and, yeah. and the bonds uh, for the next number of years. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly enough, Fidelity came out with a study that showed that one third of people that were age sixty-five sold all their stocks mm -hmm. between March and May. It's you. You can Google it, but one third mm -hmm. of people sixty-five sold all their stocks this yeah. past May. Yeah. So this March is, to May. you know, there's a, and if you talk to annuity or insurance salesman, um, God bless them. We love them. We, we, we love insurance <laughs> and we love annuity. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, yeah, they're going to talk about the sequence of return risk and they're going to scare the crap out of you. So, uh, so that's just something that to, to think about because it's, it is real and it's something that you need to, to, you know, understand. So, um, just to keep it going, Kevin, because we, we've still got some things to talk about. We want to get to questions. This is an important slide that we could talk on for an hour by itself. We won't do that to, to everybody on the call because I know you're, you're getting glassy out already. However, what's going to happen to my non-qualified accounts? If I want to save while I'm on the VSP, uh, even ETO, what can I do? Do I still have access to the stock purchase program? These are great. You know, these are a lot of important things. Now, I'm going to go through this as quickly as possible and, and then and then you take it from there. But if you take the VSP, most people have selected settings to start the following year. I say most because everybody has an opportunity or have had an opportunity to select when you're going to get your non-qualified monies. And you can't change it. And you cannot change it now. We had one a one-time change uh, occur when we had a 2016 contract, but not otherwise you can't change it. So uh, so let's pretend that someone has selected the year following retirement uh, lump sum mm -hmm. and or the year following retirement five years. You know, those are two, right. two common right. ones. So if that's the case, if that's what you chose, then you, you take the VSP now. January, you're going to get either the lump sum in the top hat, excess plan for 2017, or it's going to start paying you out over the five years or a combination, whatever you chose. Go into your empowerment uh, website, freedomtoretire.com, put in your bank information. It allows you to put in your account number, a uh, routing number, and they will direct that money directly to your account. You all you have to do is do it once and it'll apply to all accounts. It's pretty much automatic. There's nothing you can do. You cannot change investments. You, can, you don't have any control over it basically anymore. Yeah. And, and just to uh, remind everybody, when the excess plan comes out, it's, it's fully taxable except for social security and medicare and so you know 2021 could be a, a you know a, a regular tax year i'll say because mm -hmm. you're going to probably if you're a captain maybe yeah. you make 200 plus mm -hmm. whatever amount you take out in the excess if you took it all out in one year it could be a big tax year mm -hmm. um the 401k profit sharing you can roll those into iras if you want you can leave them alone if you want um and then again no more stock purchase program if you're on the VSP. There's no more uh, employee deductions. The Roth, I put the Roth traditional taxable brokerage accounts. Again, that's a whole other topic in and of itself. But what I was trying to say there, Kevin, is if you're just on the VSP, it's about 195 a year, you are within or you are under the Roth IRA limits to contribute. That's right. And we're getting W-2 income. So we believe, we've looked into this, that you can contribute there uh, and you might want to, you know, there's, there's, really if, the, if the there. spouse is not working. Yeah. yeah that's if, right. if your spouse is working or you get, you're getting some non-qualified money coming to you, then it might push you above that. Um, you can always then do maybe Roth conversions or back to a Roth. So, so those are some things we wanted to, um, to highlight there. Any, um, Let, any, let's pause for a second yeah. and see if Lisa, see if there's anything out there, Lisa. Mm -hmm. No, we haven't received any new questions. So okay. again, a reminder to the people that have joined us a little bit later, you can hit the chat box at the bottom of your screen and type in your question there and we'll, we'll do our best to get to them. All right, cool. Um, since we don't have any questions yet, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add one thing here that I think is really important. There you go for it. Um, if you are doing, let's say the backdoor Roth and your, your, uh, your spouse makes money or you're making more than the $206,000 limit from other incomes. 
then be careful. And, and a lot of times what people do, this is a strategy, is you, you can contribute to a traditional after-tax IRA, you invest it, you wait a while, and then you can convert it to a Roth. And there's very little tax owed, only on the money that has uh, increased in value. Yeah. So if you're doing that, and then you decide to roll over your, your 401k, pre-tax 401k to an IRA, then you're gonna cause yourself some tax problems, right? Yeah, if it's so, all on December 31st of that yeah. year, if, it's, if, yeah. if there's money being rolled over to an IRA and you've done the backdoor Roth, yeah. you, could, you could owe some tax. Yeah, so in other words, let's say 20, you on the VSP, you roll your pre-tax 401k into an IRA, and then subsequently next year, you go to do the backdoor Roth, the IRS is going to aggregate all of your IRAs. And so you're gonna to go to Roth conversion, instead of owing very little tax, you're gonna go, you're gonna owe tax on probably all of that conversion. So I hope that makes sense. I just wanted to, that seems like one gotcha to me that that might happen. So I wanted to throw that out there. All right, excellent. Anything else on that one, Kevin? No. Here's the fun one, <laughs> the fun one. We will try not to talk about this all day. However, I'm gonna start with a couple definitions that I kind of made up to help clarify this. I think I made up this phrase, Kevin, VSP healthcare plan. Okay, that's not really how it's been phrased, but I'm phrasing it that way because I wanna treat it as its own plan because essentially it is. And what that means is um, you can do, if you're on the VSP healthcare plan, you can do any benefit plus plan, choice plus, choice C or health savings plan. Okay, these are just definitions. Now we're gonna show you how this is applied in a second. So that's the VSP healthcare plan. Um, the retiree healthcare plan, I didn't make that one up, that's in our contract and that's very defined. If you are on the retiree healthcare plan and you're age 55 to 59, then you get choice C plan and basic dental. If you're 60 and above, then you're gonna get any benefits plus plan. And I'm trying to get to my notes here so I can talk about some of these prices here in a second if we want to. Um, most of the time though, on the retiree healthcare plan, it's gonna be paid for by sick trip trade. 120 trips mm -hmm. per year for you and your spouse gets you one of these depending on your age. So you won't, so you won't have to pay premiums uh, on number two. Yeah. On number one, you are gonna be paying your yes. premiums with the VSP healthcare plan. That's right, thank you for the air quotes. Uh, the third plan that I created or named is the age 54 and under healthcare plan. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the one that's gonna prevent a lot of people 54 and under from going on the VSP. Yep. In fact, uh, you all probably know, and there may be a question out there, hey, I'm 54 and I've got a thousand sick trips. I wanna go out on the VSP. Well, you can, but you're gonna get one year of healthcare paid for and then that's it. Bye bye. Bye bye. So bye, -bye sick no trips. sick yeah, trips yeah. can be used if you're 54 and under. So that's going to prevent some people from going out. I know people that have already in, are in that situation. The last bullet point there that I had to add is that if if you go out, tell your spouses if something happens to you, then you're still going to get these plans. And that applies to the VSP as well. The, the VSP continues on, as does the healthcare plans. All right. So those are the definitions I wanted to throw out before we get in the fun stuff. Uh, which is the next slide if I can get there. Sorry, hold on a second. Okay, here we go. All right, now let's take this by scenario real quick. The simplest first. If you're 54 and under or under, 54 or under, this is your this is your row. Okay. Again, you get now that does say over, over 55 there to the left. Oh, really? Should that say under 55? Yeah, I may have okay. I may have gotten right. a carrot there. Well, no, that's okay. Just under sure under 55, uh, thank you. And uh, so basically you're gonna get whatever program you're on, you're gonna continue that for a year, even, even the regular plan. It says any plan you continue for a year if you're under age 55 for one year. After that, and again, that's Southwest paid, um, you, the, the extension option you have is medical and dental at six months paid at COBRA rates. But aren't you also paying the premiums the first 12 months? Um, Southwest, Southwest, these are Southwest paid, paid for one year. Okay. Yeah, so, right. it says, so you it says, don't even have to pay the premiums. That's right, it says company okay. paid. All right. And I'm open for corrections on that, but I, that's what it says is company paid uh, from what we've read. If anybody has any 
anything to add, we, you know, we're open to that. So that's the deal if you're uh, uh, 54 or under. Pretty straightforward and, and really not so good, quite honestly. Uh, the next ones, um, let's see, the next scenario, if I can get uh, this situated here, is if you are uh, 55 to 65, you know, and you're, and you're thinking about the VSP, then you have two options right off the bat. Option one, I do the VSP medical plan like I talked about earlier, mm -hmm. that any benefits plus plan, okay? That's gonna last for five years or 65, whichever's first, and you're going to pay active employee rates. Mm -hmm. So active employee rates, just to remember, or, or as a reminder, currently the choice plus for the employee and spouse is about 265. The choice C is about 167 employee and spouse. They're a little bit more if you have a family, mm -hmm. um, maybe a lot more, some would say. Health savings plan, 33 bucks a month for employee plus spouse. Those are the company rates that you're going to pay for five years if you select option one. Uh, and then again, that's either gonna take you to Medicare, age 65, mm -hmm. or if it doesn't, it, you're gonna transition down here to option two. That's where you can use your sick. That's when you get to use that you know, that, that sick trip you've been building up for so long. Right. Right. And, and then this will be free. Round. Oh, go ahead. We've had a couple of questions come in. Okay. Um, and I think that we're going to get to them here in a few more slides. But as far as the cost uh, for the health care, these numbers that you're referring to now, is that what you put in the examples, like the early scenarios of the presentation? Like where did you get those? People are wanting to know, where did you come up with the expense, these costs, these cost points for the health care? Okay. Have you down of that? So I think, I think I understand. Maybe, Lisa, do you think they're referring to the scenarios we showed earlier? Is that right? Exactly. In the very beginning, slides yeah. like two or three. Okay. Mm -hmm. So those health care uh, costs, 65 and older, were Medicare. Yeah. And so Medicare, you know, is, is, um, it varies a little bit. But the software that we were using knows what state that person lives in. It knows their age. It knows their income level. Um, and so that's kind of what Medicare is based on. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it and goes I, up a lot. And I can so, just add that yeah. right now in current dollars, uh, our software usually tells us that Medicare is between ten and $12,000 a year. Mm -hmm. And that is premiums for the... Uh, the, the Medicare extended part B, plan, yeah. and it's also uh, Part D, which is uh, drugs, mm -hmm. and, and and also premiums, or not premiums, copays. It's 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 the average amount that people will pay about sixty five mm -hmm. years of age, and it's about ten to twelve thousand dollars a year for a couple, Charlie, mm -hmm. for a couple. Now, if you have Tricare, obviously, uh, we've seen it be cut in half. Almost healthcare. half, yeah, 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 absolutely. And of course, healthcare out of pocket can vary wildly, but the the software that we were using puts in statistical numbers again based on income ages and it inflates we that software that you saw inflates those healthcare numbers of between five and a half to six percent which is right. which is uh enormous uh so that's what we used in that now if someone in that one scenario had someone retiring at 62 uh, or 63 i can't remember but we basically put in uh medicare rates so it may have been even a little higher than it would have been in real life because that person, you know, or, or most people, most pilots are going to hit 62, 63, and they're going to have some sick time, we think, we hope. We hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll show you in a minute how expensive the COBRA rates are. We'll, we'll, we'll show those rates as well. So, Lisa, I hope that helps. Do you think we kind of got it okay or I let me know. That help. We've had some additional comments though that I think um, and maybe this is something we can follow up with uh, our participant later but mm -hmm. Medicare is Medicare different for military and is that a scenario that you could work with work through with somebody later? Yeah absolutely because if somebody's got TRICARE like Kevin mentioned mm -hmm. and and all we do is we take out because if you're on TRICARE in retirement you still have to pay Medicare Part B but I, I'm pretty sure you do not pay D and you do That's not, right. you, you do, do not. not. Yeah. You, you do don't not. need a supplemental or you Medicare advantage or anything yeah. like that. So, and usually out of pockets are a lot less too. So yeah, we absolutely, if someone has TRICARE, then I say, you know, God bless them because your, your healthcare costs are half of what ours will be. Yeah. And again, when you put on five and a half to 6% inflation on that cost, it's enormous after 20 years. 
So yeah, we can absolutely look at that and it, and it makes a big difference. And, and plus the people that have TRICARE, they don't have to worry about running out of insurance under these scenarios at age 63, 64. That's right, it starts at, I think, age 60, right? Yeah, so, so it just, it's, yeah. it's pretty awesome. Um, but thanks, Lisa, let us know if there's anything else there. Those are good ones. Um, let's see here. Uh, the, last, the last thing I'll talk about before we move, move to the next slide is some people might decide that, hey, I just want to go straight to option two. You know, I'm 62, 61, 62, and I've got a ton of sick trips. I don't want to pay anything. You know, I don't want to pay for any of this stuff. Any, any premiums. Any premiums, that's right. Yeah, because you still might pay. Yeah. So, um, so if I've got enough sick uh, time, then I can go straight to option two. And if I'm 55 to 59, I'm going to get choice C and dental. That's paid for by my sick trips. If I'm 60 plus, I get any plan on the benefits. That's right. Plan, all, any three of those, choice plus, choice C, health savings plan. So somebody, excuse me, might have enough um, sick time where they decided to go directly to option two. So that's, I hope that helps. That was, uh, yeah. I went through that much quicker than I thought, which makes me believe I'm probably missed a lot of stuff or something. Yeah, but no, I think, I think that was good, Charlie. It's, it's, yeah. really, it's really in the weeds. It is, it is, and a lot of moving parts here, but um, if there's anything we missed, just follow up with us or, or put a question in the chat box and we'll address it. Again, the most important thing, or one of the most important things is if you pass away, pilot passes away, spouse still gets this the same stuff that we're looking at. That's really important. One other caveat, some people really like the regular plan. If you're on the regular plan, forget it. You cannot do the regular plan on, on the VSP, except for this one up here. And you can do it for 12 months, and then that's it. You're done. So again, you go on to COBRA after that. So that's what I wanted to, uh, to highlight about the regular plan. I think, I think that's about all I wanted to um, talk about there. Um, Again, if you choose option one, you go to five years and you're age 63 and you have sick time, then you just, then you just roll down into option two is kind of how that, that works. And they're going to, when you sign up for VSP, they're going to have a, a, a form that you sign that says, I want option one, or I want option two, or I want option one followed by option two. I think that's how it's going to, that's how it's going to work. Yep, absolutely. All right. So let's see here. All right, we have two minutes, Kevin. <laughs> All right, so real quick, just to wake you up a little bit, uh, make sure you're still paying attention. Here's the COBRA rates as of 2020. So look at these numbers are massive. If you have to pay these yourself, um, you're looking at $1,100 to almost $1,800, $1,900 a month. Yeah, yeah. So no healthcare is a tremendous benefit. Yeah. the Southwest and uh, you know, you might be able to find insurance cheaper if you decide to terminate early. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, a couple real quick ones, life insurance. Most people, I think a lot of us as pilots misunderstand we're going to lose our life insurance. Um, you're basically going to pay more for your life insurance. I think that's a more of a reliable, you know, statement. First of all, do I need, I'm going to lose life insurance if, if I take the VSP. Or, or excuse me, or I'm going to, I'm going to be transitioned off of the group policy That's right. into an individual policy. That's called portability. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pay more because you, I'm, you may pay more. Yeah. Yeah. True. Be, you know, because I'm not part of a group anymore. Right. And MetLife is going to require a statement of health. Now there's also, let me get rid of my chicken scratch here. There's also a conversion. There's portability. I should have said, uh, or conversion. Portability means you go term life policy on an individual rate with a statement of health from MetLife. Yeah. Conversion means you convert to whole life policy, which are always more. And, and you know, whole life policies, Charlie, in this mm -hmm. case, they, uh, they may make sense. Yeah. Because a whole life policy, you yeah. can keep it for the rest of your life. Yeah. And you might, I'm not sure on this one, I, I did call them and talk to them just to get clarification, but you might have options to reduce your death benefit. Yeah to something that you know you find more affordable, but that's how it's gonna work. I left a number there, you can call. Uh, there will be, if you decide to take the VSP, there will be paperwork that allows you to make decisions uh, and, and take care of this, these kinds of things. I think the most important thing there is the first bullet, oops, that I 
skated through. Yeah. But uh, and, and also know if you need life insurance. You may not even need it anymore at this point. Yeah, you have, to have, you have to have an insurable interest. If mm -hmm. nobody, if you pass away and nobody cares, well, I mean, somebody's going to care, <laughs> but if you pass away and monetarily no one cares, you might not need life, life uh, insurance. Absolutely. Finally, I just wanted to put this up here because those of you that do take the VSP and you've not got your estate planning up to date, do it now because you can call this number. It's part of the benefits. Let me clarify the benefits. This is a lot of you have done this already and it can be free if one big if, if you have optional life insurance uh, through Southwest or I think it's MetLife, but, but nonetheless, if you have signed up for optional extra life insurance, then you have the option and do it before things change. Um, you know, uh, call that number. There's actually an employer plan number that you have to present to, and they will give you uh, the ability to do that. Uh, so it's, it's, I wanted to throw that in there because it's a good planning technique. It's a good time to you know, check your beneficiaries, check your estate plans, and make sure that they're, they're all up to speed. But that kind of should be done anytime anyway. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. In conclusion, Kevin, we're, we've got your top 10, and you got about 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> to do your top 10. So it, this is all about financial freedom. You know, Dave Ramsey, you know, the quote, Kevin. Yeah. Bring yeah. us home. Well, I mean, the reason to take the VSP is a life decision. It's obviously not a monetary decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, out of, out of this really bad time period, there's an opportunity for pilots to, mm -hmm. to leave the cockpit and get paid for five yeah. years. So really terrific. So, so I, I just wanted to sum up and I'm sorry, we're a little bit over anyone that needs to leave, uh, please feel free. But uh, I just wanted to sum up with, I think, are the most important things I would want to do if I was going to make this decision. And the first thing is to get real about your retirement spending. And when I say retirement spending, I mean, if you're going to take it 2021, how much do you think you're going to spend? And, and I think, you know, so many of us, Charlie, we just say, well, we kind of think we spend about mm -hmm. this much money. And it's not fun to go through this. But if you run the numbers, you can kind of Get a, get a pretty good estimation of how much you're going to spend because one of the most important inputs is, is how much you're going to spend. Uh, people will often ask us, uh, you know, how much do I need to retire? Four million, three million, two million? Well, it depends. I mean, we have clients that spend twelve to 15,000 a month and we have clients that spend 2,000 a month. And so it all depends on how much you spend. So that's the first thing I would recommend somebody does. Uh, the lost years of savings and, and what I'm talking about when I say that is the next five years, you might be able to save a little, but you're really going to probably not get, get to save as much. And so those, those are five years of lost savings. And they only matter if you have not used compound interest in the past. So if you don't have a big pile of money, and this is where I talk out of the other side of my mouth and say, in the case you've not saved a lot of money, well, then the next five years are critical and you really probably don't want to take the VSP, Charlie. Or maybe even if you can save on the VSP, that that might be an option. Or save on the VSP. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, beware of your own internal biases. I mean, it's really funny when Charlie and I talk to each other, sometimes we call each other out and we say, well, you want to make this decision regardless of the numbers. And we say, yeah, that's true. We do. Yeah. So if you're saying I want to retire and I want to stop working and I'm going to try to make the numbers fit, you know that that's your bias and try to prove that your bias is wrong. Try to be devil's advocate. And that's really important. Uh, deciding as a couple, uh, boy, this is, uh, this is always a tough one, Charlie, getting uh, the couple to both decide on what's the best decision, but, but we think it's, it's important to, uh, to do it together. Um, we've already mentioned Social Security and how it fits into your plan. Again, the really quick down and dirty is usually uh, full retirement age is better. A lot of times people think, well, I retire at 63. I need to take Social Security now. No, you can wait till 67. It's, it's your money, Social Security, and you'll get a lot more if you wait. So uh, that's something I would want you to consider. Um, you can only spend money after tax. So you can't, if you have a big, big pile of money, uh, you own a portion of it and the IRS or US Treasury owns a portion. Tax rates are good right now, but just to figure out that it's after tax money that we spend. Um, I, I say dwell on the decision as much as you can right now, Charlie, until the decision is made. 
Uh, but the, the hard part is the future is always imperfect. Mm -hmm. And we're only going to know if a decision is good or bad in the future. I mean, mm -hmm. we can only make decisions based on what we know. So if you can go to the next yeah. slide. Um, Excuse me, Kevin. Yes. Um, we do have a question. When you're, when you're making those rough estimates and mm -hmm. um, the after-tax money, is there an average tax rate you would recommend people use to, to run their numbers? Or is that really individualized? Well, I, I think, uh, and that's an excellent question. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the taxes is, is, uh, is, is kind of a, a little bit different of a calculation, I think. The, the taxes come down to, well, how much money do you think you're going to get from the VSP? Or how much income do you think you're going to get after you're retired? When we're looking at, you know, how much money do I spend each month? Those are just, those are fixed dollars now. Mm -hmm. Do you agree, Charlie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, if you're thinking about uh, how much to, should I just take off the top of taxes? You better 20%. be in the twenties. Yeah, you better 20%. be in the twenties, you know, at least um, <clears throat> to, to do that rough estimate. And that's really rough. But again, you got to think about state. Unless taxes. you live in California. Yeah. Then you got to think city, the other states, states, federal. <clears throat> so, um, but yeah, be, be in the twenties, at least if you're, if you're running average numbers, I think low twenties might be average, but again, your marginal bracket could be higher, but. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Um, <clears throat> the one on the top, uh, is, is kind of, I, I'll say it's kind of funny, but I don't mean funny in a ha ha way. I mean that, you know, when, when, when it hits the fan, like it did in March and April, mm -hmm. a, a lot of people who thought they understood their investment philosophy found out that they didn't understand their investment philosophy. The one thing Charlie and I are blessed with is we really do believe in an investment uh, philosophy. Mm -hmm. So when it does hit the fan, we, we know what to do. But we, we just think it's really important if you want to read some books. There, there's some terrific books out there mm -hmm. on investment philosophy. Um, keeping it simple is probably the best thing. But mm -hmm. make sure you have an investment philosophy. Because when you no longer have any more money coming in or you can't work extra trips to make more money mm -hmm. to make up for investment mistakes, it's very important to have an investment philosophy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, bankruptcy. Uh, and Charlie, you want to share the bankruptcy? Uh, I'll let you do one of the top 10 here. Oh, thanks. Um, you know, I think right now Southwest has a couple years of cash. And I don't really know what that means. I don't know if that means we can fly empty airplanes for two years, but I, I do know that Southwest is fortunate in that they were able to go out and secure a lot of money because of their good credit rating, because of their strong balance sheet. So, like you said, we don't know what's going to happen. We, who could have ever imagined we were even talking about Southwest potentially being, yeah, know. you know, uh, this time last year. But, uh, but man, it sure does seem like a low probability. Uh, but still, again, you got to you got to think about it. And if you're afraid of it, which maybe you should be, just mm -hmm. go ahead and say in the first year the VSP ends and see see what mm -hmm. happens to your you know your mm -hmm. plan. Mm -hmm. um, probably not going to happen. Right. It's very low probability, but big consequences. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other thing too is decision making and financial planning. Uh, many of us want to know exactly how things are going to turn out if we do all the right things. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Just look at the margin of error. If you if you say I need six thousand dollars a month and you think you can generate nine or ten thousand dollars a month, I think that's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that's a great point. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. And 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 probably if you think you can generate ten. If you came to a financial planner, we would tell you, yeah, it looks like everything is good. If you need six and you think you can generate 10, mm -hmm. we're probably just going to affirm anything yeah. that you do anyway. Um, and then the two bonus thoughts is, is, is have an idea how you're going to create income. What's going to be your approach? You have a number of years to think about it mm -hmm. so, and, and study up on it. And then the last one is uh, most of us with financial, uh, this is what I've I found, is we learn by compare and contrast. So run some assumptions with no VSP, run some assumptions, what, what you did, Charlie, mm -hmm. run some assumptions with the VSP and compare and contrast. Yeah, yeah. And, I, you know, just be ready to be flexible in, yeah. in retirement because uh, you got to kind of have some guardrails for that spending. I think, hey, this is, you know, if, if you think I, I need a 10,000 to live on and then th under these scenarios, it, it only, you can only produce 9,000, that's not good for you, then you probably ought not to, you know, ought not to take the VSP. So there's, there's going to be some flexibility needed there. But it's a trade-off of it. No, we appreciate you all being part of the call. And we really hope this was brought value to you. And, and it's a tough decision. We understand how you feel. 
trust me. Charlie does. And, and, uh, He's and, an FO. And I was kidding when I said, I want you to go for seniority. That's not true at all. Uh, but, uh, but I hope everybody got something out of it. And uh, please reach out and let us know how we can help. We're, we're glad to do it. So we really appreciate you all. Thank you all for attending.